everybody, Dr. Rick dropping in. I am not going to be long. It's Sunday. I am headed to spend some time with the guys, chop it up, uh, lay back and relax and decompress before getting back at it again uh, this week. But I want to follow up on a video I did earlier on individualism. Uh, I've done a couple, and the last one addressed this whole situation with Drea Michelle and uh, Jalen Green, uh, the NBA star, who is the same age as Drea's son. And I went into depth talking about the implications of a concept in which this is acceptable in the sense of social social response. People are going to do what they do, uh, and in, in 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 the grand scheme of things, based off of constitutional rights and social freedoms, they can do what they want to do. But the understanding has to be under the premise that there is no true freedom in behavior because there's always the consequence of the action. And because we live in a society, a social environment, creating constructs of individualism doesn't change the outcome for everyone involved. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is you can say all day, it's not my business. Those are grown people, do what you want to do. You can say all of the things that we love to say that remove us from the accountability and responsibility of calling a spade a spade and holding people accountable for behaviors that impact uh, more than just them. Them, and, and so here's the thing. Maybe you understand it, maybe you don't. Maybe you at least are aware of it, but don't really understand how it works. But what I can tell you without going into great detail and a prolonged dissertation into uh, social learning theory, social implications, social uh, collectivism, and all these other different uh, concepts and theories that, and theorems that are associated with understanding society, what I can tell you is there are also scientific implications because there's there are universal laws. One is that there's always an equal and opposite reaction to any action. So for every action, there is either a reward or a consequence. Now, the thing is, because we're in a social environment, these consequences don't just impact us. These, these consequences are ultimately going to be felt in the greater greater sense. It may start in the in the parents' bedroom and it'll be felt in the home. It may start in the home and it'll be felt in the community. It may start in the community and be step, felt uh, throughout the city and on and on and on because there's this domino effect. Well, let me break it down to you another way and I'm going to tell you about something else that popped up. Um, this way. Okay. A parent is raising their kid to basically whatever you want to do, you can do it. And then they go to school and they defend whatever the kid does with immense aggression and even violence, if necessary, to defend that kid's right to do absolutely what they want to do, regardless to whether it's right, regardless to whether it holds up to any type of pro-social code or not you're not going to tell my kid what to do. You're not going to do this. And then nobody, because it's not their kid, it's not their business. So nobody checks it. Nobody calls them on it. And that kid grows up to kill your son or your daughter. That's a simplified version of it, but that happens every day where somebody's child who wasn't properly engaged, wasn't properly nurtured, wasn't properly given uh, some pro-social values, interests, and principles 
comes out and because they don't know who they are because they can be easily frustrated they're easily driven they there's no real true impulse control because the development is off there are issues that haven't been dealt with nobody's held them accountable so the idea of being accountable doesn't register so then they come out in the moment that something stressful hits they react and they react in what they've always seen violence has always defended their right to do what they want to do so they respond with violence so then now somebody's lost their daughter and that person is probably going to jail for the first time in their life being held accountable for something that they probably could have avoided if there had been accountability throughout the process of them growing up. I know it's hard to tell a parent anything about their kids today. People want to fight, but we have to figure out an answer. We can't succumb to it because ultimately we still end up with a bigger situation and problem and it's ultimately the demise of our race. So then now there's this push or this trend where our men are wearing, well, our boys, because they haven't grown up yet, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Being 18 doesn't make you a man. So our boys are now running around and it's become a thing to wear pearls. And everybody's saying, man, it's just a trend. It's a fad. It's the same thing as back in the day when we did this and when we did that or when that happened and when this happened and all that. Let me tell you something. In an environment in which the black family has been consistently under attack for the last 50 years, in an environment in which there is a clear-cut agenda to feminize uh, the image of the black male, I'm not talking about homosexuality. I'm talking about the black heterosexual male. There is an agenda in place to feminize, uh, feminize their image. And in feminizing their image, they emasculate their capacity to function in the role of men. Now, this is not something that is done uh, uh, unwittingly. This is an agenda. You emasculate the men, meaning render them uh, powerless or with less power than they need to function. And you now have access to the entire population because without the covering of the men, I don't care how affluent our women become, I don't care how big their bank accounts become, how big their houses become, and how much they say they don't need a man. The moment that we become emasculated and incapable of covering them, we are done. And that's the truth. And it's absolutely nothing that's going to change it. Um, and so, and so that means we have to step up. We have to see this. We have to be willing to say, you know what? Not on my watch. This is not going to be our truth. I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to scream it to the rooftop if nobody hears it. I'm going to scream it to the rooftop if nobody wants to accept it. Uh, I'm going to scream it to the rooftop if nobody accepts it. I'm going to do everything that I need to do in order to make sure that my presence is felt. I can't make anybody do anything, but I can be an influencer. I can be a voice. I can be a frequency. I can be a vibration. I can be the the, 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 thing, the reason somebody does something different and that somebody can be a catalyst for change in the lives of others. It has to be embraced. It has to be in empowered it has to be uh, a part of our conversation moving forward we can no longer sit up and think that we can just let everybody do whatever they want to societies don't work that way and no other species do you see uh societal anarchy tolerated species will kill off people with kill off part of the species not people but other other others in the species or in the social group, whether it's a lion pride, whether it's elephants, whether it's hippos, whether it's, they will kill off the moment that there is behavior that puts the others in jeopardy. We're the only ones that want to think that we can overcome this social construct that has held us in place all these years and do what you want to. Empires have failed because of wanting to out 
uh, work outside of the boundaries of the social constructs that protect the sanctity of what's inside. We want to live a life that's comfortable. We want to live a life that's this, but we want to do it on our terms with no sacrifice, with no commitment, with no sense of uh, responsibility and accountability. And that cannot be the case. Look, I just had to bring that to you. I know it won't get any traction uh, because it's not gossip. It's not something exciting. It's not something that uh, everybody can, you know, go share and talk about. But it's going to be whether they, it's engaging these topics and topics like it that have substance but aren't necessarily exciting because we don't understand them. That's going to be the catalyst for change in a positive direction for our people. And there's no escaping it. You can sit up and you can dismiss it. You can sit up and you can marginalize it. You can sit up and say it's a bunch of hogwash. But I'm telling you, history has proven it. Science is proving it. Uh, and we're living it every day. So you can say what you want to about it, but that's the reality. Look on that note. Look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. And don't forget, if you believe in the work we do, and have done for decades in the black community. Look in the description box and look at the ways that you can support our work and give. On that note, I'm out.